Hey friends! Welcome to episode number two of Conversations with Parents Who Write. I'm really excited about this next episode. Tonight I am going to be joined by Angel Norvell. Um, and she is an avid bookworm and a writer and someone who wears multiple hats as we all parents do. She's currently working on publishing her debut self-help book, Hey Girl, Fix Your Crown, which discusses moving past breakup pain. What? Um, and she's writing her new series, The Line Between Light and Darkness, which is a young adult fantasy book about Greek gods. Um, and when she's not writing, she is being a mom to an audacious 11 year old and a puppy, um, which let's face it, taking care of a puppy is also like taking care of a toddler again. Uh, she is also a paralegal, a soldier, and a devoted shoe fanatic. So I am going to now figure out how to bring Angel on. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You're there. Sorry. Yes, I am here. Okay, so I gave the brief intro to our people about the books that you are working on. Um, can you tell us where you're, where are you right now? Where are you living? Where are you phoning in from? I live in Selma, Alabama right now. Um, I moved down here to be closer to my parents. I'm originally from Ohio. Um, I felt that, like, one day I woke up and I was like, hey, I only see my parents. I normally see them, like, two times a year. Um, and that's, like, I bring my son down for the summer, and then I, they bring him back, and they come to visit Ohio. And I was like, well, if they live for, like, the next five years, you know, God forbid they, I mean, God help it, they live longer than that. But if they only live the next five years, that means I only see them ten more times. And I wasn't okay with that. Mm. So I like picked up and moved so that I could be closer and spend more time with them. Oh, and now you get to see them all the time. <laughs> Every day, <laughs> every single day. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Big heart, <laughs> big heart. Yes. Um, so is there anything else that you want to tell us about your family before I jump into like writing stuff? <laughs> I have a very basic family, honestly. My, my mom, my dad is here, my my son, and my dog, who seems to be the most spoiled person of the whole household. I did, oh. before I moved here, have a snake, and his name was Dallas, but I had to give Dallas up because my mom does not do snakes at all, so. Yeah, my mom does not do snakes. Like, at all. <laughs> like, like so as a I kid. Did see him. Go ahead. I, I get to see him. I get to see my sergeant major, um, and he has him in his office at work. So when I go, I get to see him. But yeah, my mom would would never allow me to bring a snake in the house. When I was a little girl, and my mom would be mowing the lawn outside, we would all hear the scream of like murder, and my brother and I would be like, "Oh, mom saw a snake!" Like <laughs> we just knew. <laughs> I'm sure she appreciates me sharing that story live. Um, so tell me, what is it that, um, what do you enjoy about writing? What is it that has created that pull, that draw for you, that this is something you have to do? Well, when I was in high school, uh, my English teachers would always tell me I was a good writer. Um, I never believed them because I felt like everybody else in my class could write too. So I just kind of, you know, chalked it up and went about my day. Uh, when I was in college, I did get a lot of feedback from professors about my writing. And this would be stuff that I pumped out the day before it was due. No edit, just type, submit, type, like put it through like the little plagiarism thing to make sure it was okay and then submit. And they would be like, oh, this was so great. And I'd be like, if you only knew, I would spend an hour on this thing. But still, at that point, and that was like eight years ago, I wasn't writing. Um, I went through a really, really, really bad breakup that caused me to start journaling. And as I got to journaling every single day or three or four or five times a day, that's when I fell into writing and 
it became like a habit to me. So where Hey Girl Fix Your Crown came from was based off of that breakup. What prompted me to write the book was um, my son's father's sister actually had a situation where hers kind of mirrored the breakup that I went through. It was like a mirror. And I was just kind of telling her all of the stuff that, that helped me get through it. And I was like, if this is helping her, I'm sure it can help somebody else. So then I started writing it. And it's developed into a book. So that. And now it's a book. Book writing. Yep. At first it was a journal with just like prompts. And then I was like, I can put more in there. And I started writing more. And now it's like a full novella at this point. Oh. Wow. So is it, because you said self-help. So is it also, is it nonfiction? Is it kind of memoir? Is it? Um, here are things that you can do too. Tips, like what, what, is, what kind of book is it? So it started out as tips, but then I felt like I needed to be a little bit more personal with the, the um, topics that I have in there. So like the first topic is, is heartbreak. And the first thing I do is tell a story about how I was crying so hard one day that I actually fell down the steps. And I mean, I rolled down a flight of stairs because I couldn't see the landing because I was crying so much. Um, so I open with that story and I go into how heartache can, how heartbreak can affect somebody and then the things that I did. And I make it clear in the beginning that these are just things that I did to help me get through it. Um, and then I talk about uh, situationships. I talk about um, jumping in a dating pool before you're actually ready. I talk about not blaming yourself. But then I also talk about the stuff that nobody mm -hmm. wants to hear about, like, you have to take ownership that you had a part in the failure, regardless if you think you did or not, you, you did at some point, you have to take ownership of that. So it's just a lot of different topics to help somebody, you know, either realize that, okay, yeah, I need to understand this. Or I, I had a friend who alpha read it, which I didn't ask him to mm -hmm. alpha read it, but he was just kind of going through something. I was like, hey, read this. And he was like, oh, my God. Like, you do not understand how much this helped me. So I was like, that means there is something in here that's going to help somebody. Right. You know, um, Michelle Davis has posted a comment. She wants to know, where do I get this book? If you only knew how much I need this right now. <laughs> oh, my God. So it, it's currently going through its final stages of editing. Um, I do have a blog that I'm working on where I will be talking about the exact same topics. Um, and I will type my website in the chat. So can I type in the Thank chat on here? Yes, I can. Ha -ha. You should. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? Trying to do these things. It's also funny because and to make sure that I catch the comments, I have this going on on my desktop too. And like to see the delay between the phone right. and live versus like the replay of the video. And I'm like, ah, it's so weird. <laughs> but um, so, um, that's my... I just started this website like three days ago, so there's not much there, but I will be discussing these topics. So if you, you know, subscribe to the blog, then you'll get, you know, first notification when I post something um, about it. Like I have one blog, I have one blog post on there from 2018, and it was a letter that I wrote to my, like as an adult, I wrote to my 16 year old self, because when I was 16, I thought mm -hmm. I knew everything like most kids at 16 do. So that is the only one yeah. on there right now, but I will be updating it with um, relationship type stuff soon. Probably tomorrow will actually be the first blog post about it. So, I kudos to you for launching it now because when I started Life Beyond Parenting, I and having a background as an editor, like my coach was like, publish your website. And I was like, no, 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 I need four more articles. And I need to make sure that I've got all the structure worked out. And she was like, no, just publish it. And I was like, no, 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 it's got to be perfect. And she was like, no, <laughs> like, what, what do you think you're doing? Just do it, like, do it scared. And I waited. So kudos to you, because you're doing it right. Like, you're supposed to just start it. And figure it out Just as do you it. go. You're doing great. And I, yeah. I used to be like that, believe it or not. Everything had to be perfect, but I found that I never do stuff when everything has to be perfect because nothing's ever perfect. So I just do it, and then when something breaks, I just fix it and make it better. 
I need to do that. Like I spend <laughs> what, like even when I'm putting together a social media post to be like, oh, I want to get this idea to cross people. And it's great within like the first rendition of it, but then I'll spend like another hour or two, like tweaking every little perfection. And I'm like, what am I doing? Why? No, this is not what I want to be doing with my me time after my kids are in bed. Like, yep, it was, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, Erin. Yeah, I completely Stop. understand. <laughs> um, I'm curious. Did you write when your son was little, little? Like, or when, what, how did you fit in writing when your son was in the earlier years? When we parents feel like we have no time so, to ourselves. When I was, when my son was about two or three, I would write. Um, I spent so much time deployed because I'm in the military that uh, it was really hard for me to try to balance all of it. So uh, because my parents moved to Alabama, when they did move to Alabama, when I would deploy, I would have to get him here so that he had somewhere to live and then deploy. Um, I always wrote on my deployments and then come home. And then when he was about four is when the whole breakup thing actually started happening. And I would just write. And I found myself writing after I put him to bed at night. So that was my, my quiet time. Because, you know, the age of four is mommy, 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 cookie, cookie, cookie. So after he went to bed, I would find myself writing or while he was in school. So and during that time, I was a uh, legal collector at a, a collections law firm. And uh, in between my cases, I, I would have a word document open and I would be writing and I would, if I had a thought, I would, you know, type it in and jot it. And then at the end of the day, I would email it to myself. I did that for years. And one day my supervisor actually caught me and he was like, what is that? I was like, Oh, fuck. he was like, like you're reading a book. I said, no, I'm writing one. And he just kind of looked at me and he walked away and I asked him about it. I'm like, you know, am I going to be in trouble? He was like, your numbers haven't, and so I would never have known if you were doing anything else besides work. Okay, cool. So when I didn't have my kid, I was I was writing. What helped me a lot when he was little was my phone because I would type just notes, 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 notes. Everything was in my notes. Um, so that helped me a lot. Um, now that he's older, it's a lot easier. I mean, now it is still mommy, 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 but it's not cookie, cookie, cookie. It's more can I play the game or can I do this? But if I tell him that I'm writing, he'll he'll back off for about an hour or two. Then it's mommy, mommy, mommy again. <laughs> That's cool. That's really cool. I've been working on that. My preschooler, who will be four next month, um, he, he, and it's not cookie. For him, it's just snack, snack, snack. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want a snack. Okay. Um, but he he knows that Thursdays are a big writing day for me. And that was hard um, at, like, the, like, the beginning of the school year for him. Uh, he, mm -hmm. he goes Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings for, like, a couple of hours. But so Thursdays, he's home with me all day. And Thursdays just, it tends to be a big writing day for me because I'm also usually prepping for these. And, um, you know, I, he comes up and I acknowledge him. And if he needs to show me something, okay, cool. But then I'm like, okay, but mama has to work right now. And he's like, oh, okay. So, um, you know, and he's gotten better at actually like entertaining himself. Like my husband just noticed that he's like, he's playing by himself. And I was like, yes, I've been teaching him to like, you know, like, like I don't send him away crying, you know, like I, I'll be like, oh, and you know, we can fit in this time to do this thing together. But right now mama needs to work on this or, um, it's just, it's been slow, but he's, he's been making progress in that regard too. So yes. Um, I saw another message pop up and I have things like all over the place. So that's why I just want to double check that I am seeing people's comments. Um, because you know, again, there's like notifications everywhere. Um, this is, okay, so this question is, how did you find the time to really go through all of your notes on your phone to put them in paper? Uh, so what I did was I finally broke down and invested in a MacBook. Like, I didn't want to buy a MacBook because they were so expensive. Like, they were so expensive. But when I 
when I went on my last appointment, I finally was like, okay, I need a computer and I want something that will go with my phone. So I bought a MacBook. When you write notes in uh, iPhone, it automatically goes to a MacBook. So what I'm able to do in my MacBook is just copy and paste my notes out of my MacBook notes into like a Microsoft Word, and then I'll organize them from there. So that, I do. I honestly thing. will say, I don't like MacBooks. I will honestly say as a computer, as a phone, I love Apple. <laughs> But the MacBook itself okay. is like the iOS system. I would rather have a Windows computer, but I keep it because it's a cross between my phone, my iPad, my son's phone, um, his iPad. So I, I have to hold on to it. But this is my baby has all of the, my hard drive is full of writing stuff right now. I have to clear some of it out. That's amazing. Um, yeah. You know what? I now I'm kind of like, I need to go look at my computer because my notes aren't synced to my Mac because I don't use my Mac ID. I actually use, um, I use uh, my Google ID on my phone. So that confused the syncing of yeah. the notes, but I'll airdrop them. I airdrop them. Yep. And I do sometimes voice mm -hmm. dictation. I'll do it in the notes app or sometimes I'll text myself with dictation. Um, yeah. I used to use the voice memo app and that made me very nervous. <laughs> I don't know why. Like I would just like stutter. I'd be like, now I don't know what to say because the timer's running. Right. I don't know. It was, I, like I got camera shy with my voice memo app. I don't know why. <laughs> um, okay. So we've answered questions. I'm going to go for another question for you. Um, sure. Do, 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 do. What did you, we, we covered a lot of these indirectly, which is great. So, which is what I like about it. These are, these are backup. Oh. We're having a natural conversation anyway. Cat, oh, here's a nice. good one. Ready? Okay. Can you share something you learned about the writing process or the craft that was a game changer for you? And then where uh, or from whom did you learn that? Um, so, when I started legal, because I also legal right, I, I have to legal right because I'm a paralegal. Um, I grew up with a thesaurus because everybody did in like a hardback book. But um, when I started legal writing, I had to kind of switch from the way I wrote like young adult non nonfiction into like legal writing mode, which is like a, a different beast altogether. So when I started legal writing and I saw how legal writing flowed, um, my writing actually got better once I learned how, once I mastered legal writing, my nonfiction and my uh, fiction writing got like 10 times better because I was able to flow. Um, because in legal writing, um, you have to, to write in a way that is very professional, but also dumb it down enough that like both the plaintiff and the defendant understands what it says, but use terms that you have to use because the judge says so. So you have to kind of fit all of those things in together. So I transferred that skill over to my writing and it just started to flow a lot better for me. Um, legal writing is hard in my opinion, but apparently I'm good at it. People keep telling me that I, I, that I don't believe for a second. Um, but like, for example, I worked at a family law office for many of years, and um, I wrote uh, pretty much, what are those things called, parenting plans for people uh, who have shared custody. And just, like, writing the the story, because uh, sometimes you have to put the story of why this is happening into there. And, but so the attorney who worked for me, which is the one who taught me the legal right, would say, you know, no, use this word or, you know, put this here to make it sound better, you know, flip these two or three things around. So it's like, hmm, I wonder if I can take this legal stuff over here and just put it in regular people words and it, it worked. So um, my writing got 10 times better and I could tell because my college professors noticed it <laughs> when I was going back to school, they noticed like the, the change in my writing over the 16 weeks. And I was like, yeah, I think work for that. But, uh, but that was a great question. 
You know what you reminded me of? That was a great answer. So thank you for sharing. And it reminded uh -huh. me of a similar experience. Um, so I graduated with a degree in literature. Doesn't mean I'm a good writer, right? Like I do a degree in literature. Right. Um, and then my first job out of college was as an editor. And, and, and then I soon realized that I didn't know how to edit. Like I didn't, I, my grammar knowledge was abysmal. Mm -hmm. And I thought that I was not going to keep my job. Like I really thought I was like, going to get fired after <laughs> I got this. Um, so I started taking an online basics of grammar class that that brushed me up on everything that you know you basically learn in like fifth grade that of course I didn't remember yep. um and and through my years of editing I I got I got a handle on grammar after the first six months I kept my job like I, and then I and then I moved up to managing editor so it really but when I started editing other people's work and I could see where the holes were, where like information was mm -hmm. missing or like, and then I could also understand like from the writer's perspective where they have the curse of knowledge. So to them, it makes perfect sense. But for a stranger, it doesn't. Yeah. Um, that improved my writing drastically. Mm -hmm. Yep. That, that's pretty much what um, happened to me. I can, I'm a great writer, but editing, I, I cannot edit my own work. I can edit other people's work, but my own work, I cannot edit because I know where the periods and commas are supposed to be, and I read it that way. So I have to have other people do it because it'll be an abysmal mess if I try to do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I love, I love editing. For me, it's like putting a puzzle together, um, and it, it kicks in my logic brain, and so I just... But yeah, I see it as a puzzle. But um, so what are some of the hardest roadblocks you've overcome with your writing? Really just writing. Um, there was a period where I did not write anything. And it was like a period of like two or three years where I just was like, okay, I'm done with this. I don't want to write no more. Um, I read a ton of books and I would thought that me reading um, would kick me back into writing because I would read stories that I loved and I would like kick myself back into writing. Nope, that didn't help either. Um, so one day um, while on my last appointment, I was sitting in my office and I'm like, God, I don't have anything to do. Like nothing. There was nothing happening that day. I was working a night shift and I was like, maybe I should just, you know, write a couple of things or, you know, just something to pass the time because it was like a 13 or 14 hour shift. And I was like two hours in, like I have to find mm -hmm. something to do. So I, I just started writing and that is where the uh, the line between, well, the, the line between light and darkness started while I was in deployment, um, but I've changed it since like all the way since. But I did start a story on deployment called A God Among the Ranks, which is probably only like four chapters in because I've stopped writing again. But it's about a God, I love Greek mythology, Roman mythology. It's about a God who is disguised as a soldier. So what better place to write this type of stuff on a, as on a deployment? So um, right. that story was born. So once my stories become, get born and I start like really getting into it, I, I go through a period where I just continue to write. Um, and then if I get discouraged, like if somebody reads my work and they say, well, I don't like this. I used to get really discouraged and I, it would cause me to stop writing. But I've learned over mm -hmm. the years that everybody's not going to like your stuff. So I just kind of, yeah. you know, put it aside and just keep going. Yeah. That's my dog. One of the best, <laughs> one of the best bits of advice that I got was um, the whole world is not your audience. And mm -hmm. the people who are right for you will find you and they'll resonate with you. And those are the people mm -hmm. that you're writing for. You don't need to waste your energy on the people who your work is not for. So, um, right. Yes. And that's the great advice. Michelle said, my writer friend once told me writers write, keep editors employed and focus on writing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see. We've covered most of this. 
I think I'm gonna, we're getting close. Well, okay, we're already at 8.30. So I think I'm gonna try to wrap this up with, do you feel that writer has helped make you a better parent? Um, I think, yes and no. Writing and reading has helped me um, in ways, but it's also kind of hindered me in ways. Um, I very much enjoy reading. Um, Harry Potter was the first book I ever read. And up until 13, you can catch me dead reading a book. Um, but I started that series. I fell in love with reading. Um, I naturally, my son taught me to fall in love with reading. My kid is not a reader, and I don't blame him for it. He's only 11. He'll read a comic book. He and anime. Um, so he'll read a comic book. But, like, a chapter book, he's not. Yeah, I can't. And he has uh, an entire bookcase. Like, he has behind him a book that are his that I buy for him. But he's probably read, like, maybe three. Um, I got him to read Percy Jackson only mm -hmm. because we read it together. Um, so it's up here somewhere on my shelves behind me. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and that and that sense it kind of kind of hindered me a little bit because I kind of expected something out of him that I shouldn't have you know at this age the 11 year old kids don't want to read they want to watch TikTok and play Fortnite because that's what my son does and I've grown to understand that that is what he is going to do I am not upset that he enjoys to play Fortnite and uh, read comic books but I do appreciate that he will open a book um, as far as writing is concerned, I think it has made me a little bit more crucial of his work. I mean, yes, he's only in the sixth grade, but I'd be like, uh, you need a period here, a comma goes there, like you did an exclamation mark. He's like, mom, we're not even learning that stuff yet. But I was like, but it goes there. Like, I need you to put it there so that <laughs> I can read the rest of the paper. Because I've grown to a point since I started writing, especially on Facebook with my friends. They'll write a post and it won't have like periods or commas or anything in it. And I'm like, what does this say? This really long run on sentence is really annoying me. And I just kind of throw past it because I can't read it. So um, it, it makes it easier. But then when he goes to do his reports, he's on his way, mom, how can we word this to make it sound cool? <laughs> so it has helped and hindered in, in both ways. But my son did say at 11, he said, if I ever wrote a book, he would read it regardless. So he said that that would be like one of the only books that he will ever read. So I hope I'm going to hold him to that when I publish my young adult book that he's going to read it. That's really, That's really cool. cool. Yeah. I keep looking behind me and be like, where's my Percy Jackson series? My books are so out of order. They, they're terribly out of order. They used to be. I see the Twilight I series. I don't remember I what series like multiple times. Yeah. I really have a plot. I've got Tolkien over here and I've, oh, Percy is up there. Yes, the next series. There's Harry Potter. I've got Gone with the Wind. I, I always ask people at the end, like, what's your favorite book? And when I was going through my bookshelf, I didn't even realize that I have the tales from 1,001 1, Nights, like the Arabian Tales. And I was like, oh, okay, this is going upstairs with me too. Wow. I, I don't remember, oh, I, don't remember right. I have that one, right? I've got C.S. Lewis over here. Uh, Wicked. I, I like C.S. Lewis. Barbara that Kingsolver. Have you ever read Barbara really Kingsolver? Hard. I have not. Barbara Kingsolver. I love her. I've got so many of her books. Um, yeah. And then I've got like a romance book, one random romance book that I lent to a friend and she read it so much. She actually ripped the book in half and then had to buy me a new book. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> yeah, she ripped it in half, literally. I, I can honestly say- I'm not say gonna give her name right I've now. I've never read mortified. a romance book. That is like one of three that I read. When I first started reading, I read like a young adult mystery book and that was what first got me interested in reading. And then I was in my late teens and I was at my aunt's house and she had tons of romance and novels. And I was like, oh, I'll pick one of these oh, and start man. reading. And so like, I think I have like three of those. But yeah, I'm, I'm still looking up at all my books. They're just really out of order. But anyway, it's a, yeah. it's a variety of genres. My poetry section's over there and yeah, anyway. 
Um, so what's your favorite book? <laughs> you, can, you can name a couple. I, I, I've been thinking about that since you asked me, and it's really hard to, to like, pick one. Um, actually, I want to say Harry Potter, but it's not, like, my favorite book. It's my favorite series, but it's not my favorite book. I would, I would say, uh, and, and it's so crazy because I don't even know the last name of the author who wrote this book. My favorite book probably would be The Instant Millionaire. I listen to this book every single month. Um, and it's by Mark. I, I want to say Manson, but it's not Manson. Manson is the suitable artist, not giving a F, but I, I like that book too. Um, Mark something. Can't think of his last name right now. But, a million. Uh, the Instant Millionaire. The Instant Millionaire. Looking it up right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Fisher. Uh, Fisher. Yes, Mark Fisher. And it is yes. about a guy who wants to become a millionaire, but he doesn't know how to go about it. So he goes to talk to an old millionaire who gives him all of these different tips. And the tips are just like so plain. Like uh, one of the questions was, if you could write yourself a check right now of how much you're worth, what would you write? And uh, the guy said like $10,000. And to be honest, that's what I would probably say about ten or $12,000, like something that I can cash. And he keeps telling them how he's just lowballing. And like at the end of the book, he goes, um, you know, write yourself a check for a million dollars and post date it six years from now. And if you follow my steps, you'll be a millionaire. So at the end of the book, uh, the instant millionaire, the original instant millionaire dies. So the only uh, caveat was he had to continue to share the wealth with other people. So in five years, he became a millionaire. Um, I was like, this is a great book. Come to find out it's a true story, like uh, about something that happened to Mark Fisher and he wasn't a millionaire. I was like, I, it's a very short book. You can find a PDF online for free. It is a great book. I listen to it every single month. It's like my motivation. Not saying that I want to be a millionaire. Who, want, who doesn't want to be a millionaire? Everybody wants like millions of dollars, but it's not something that I wake up and say, I want to be a millionaire. I would say, I want to sell this many copies of my book and hopefully I became a millionaire. But, you know, if my book helped one or two people, I would also be okay with that. But the, the jewels in that book are unmatched. I would recommend it to anybody. Thank you so much for the recommendation. I really appreciate that. My very last question, and then I promise no you can go. What's your favorite book that you read <laughs> to your kid when he was little or ever? that he actually liked <laughs> hard questions at the end i'm sorry <laughs> it, it's okay my, my kid has never been a book person but when he was little he had this book about a bear i don't remember the name of it but it was about a bear and the bear went to the next town over to get some groceries for his grandma and then when he came back the grandma wasn't there and she was just kind of looking for him or the bear was looking for the grandma. Um, I, I originally thought it was the three little bears, which is why I bought it, but it wasn't. Um, but he ends up, the bear finds his grandma, and the grandma had just went outside and got, like, some corn or something. I had to read that book to my son every single night, and if I did not read the book to him, he would cry until I read the book. So I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to keep this book forever, and he's going to grow up with this book. When we moved one time, the book got lost, and I have not been able to find it because I don't remember the name. But he still remembers me reading that book to him. Um, but, yeah, he – and it's so funny because tomorrow at his school is read with parents, and I have to go up to his school, and I don't know if I have to read to him or he's going to read to me, but we're going to do this whole reading thing. Um, he will He will read something – that he's interested in if it has anime. Like, if an anime creator wrote the anime into a book, he'd probably read it. Like, with words, he'd probably read it. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That should, that should be a thing. Like, take The Grapes of Wrath and turn it into an anime book and, like, you know, get people to read these, these uh, books. I anime actually style. just bought that book. I actually just bought that book at the bookstore. Um, because yeah. I don't know if you're familiar, I used to watch this show called White Collar, and the uh, one of the characters on White Collar, uh, his name was really Grayson, he played Mozzie, 
and he gifted that he gifted a first edition book to everybody on the crew and I was like hmm a first edition book of anything is very expensive because something is good with this book so I just bought it and it's sitting on my nightstand behind Legendborn because I'm finishing Legendborn okay okay so you're ready for it that's exciting I don't actually have that one I Legend I've Born had is Gone I... with the Wind sitting here for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I go in the bookstore and pick books because I like the cover, really. That's how I picked Legend Born, not because I knew it was coming out. I was like, oh, this is a cool cover. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Talking about Greek myths, I'm going to have to get my book. Hold on. Oh, this one. Oh. I can't remember if this is the first or the last in the series. The Lost Gate. Oh, it's backwards. It's an oh. Orson Scott Card series. And um, I, I hated the last book. I'll be honest. I hated the last book. It was a three series. Well, I didn't hate it. I disliked the third book. But I, I loved the first one in the series. Like, hands down. Orson Scott Card is kind of known for that. Like, people don't tend to like the last book mm -hmm. in the series. But the first okay. one was absolutely amazing. And it just gave, like, such a different uh, uh, thought about the Greek gods. Or all gods, actually. It turned out that all gods from all cultures um, are all real. And so there and they're like different families so um all the gods that you ever read about from other cultures are are all real um like but they're from like another planet like asgard in a sense um and yeah and it's called the lost gate because loki uh separated that world from our world and some of the families and the, so the oh, families I got definitely. like separated um i definitely want to yeah it it's just a really my interesting <laughs> I know, right? Tom! Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this. We went a little bit over time. Thank you for sticking around. No um, and you've been amazing. Hey, if you need anything, just let me know. I am, I, this was actually pretty fun. I was kind of nervous at the beginning, but I had a good time. I, I'm so glad that you had fun. Please keep us posted about your book. Um, when it comes out, I will. I will be happy to read it and to um, talk about it on my site and be like, I got to speak with her back when. <laughs> Perfect. That would be great. But I will, I will keep everybody updated. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. You have a great night now, okay? You too. Bye, everyone.